Hey, what's going on guys and girls and in this video today We're gonna talk about how you can make 10k per month with Shopify dropshipping and Six slides everyone knows the rules I'll try to condense this into six slides that are easy to follow and if you guys have any questions Just comment down below and if you guys are new to this channel. My name is Leighton and I've done over a million dollars Here's my store in the last 365 days Shopify dropshipping one product store from Aliexpress you know, nothing crazy here. I've been in the game for six years and I share what I learned with this store and I make YouTube content um, and I just keep growing. I might sell this store soon and I can make a video about that and I'll make videos about my next brand. But until then guys, this is what this video is about and let me just press play and we'll jump right into it. No editing guys, sorry if you're bored, but I try to provide value over entertainment. So yeah, let's get into this. Let me make this bigger. Okay, so make 10k per month Six slides everyone knows the rules. Let me quit some of my apps. So there's no sounds All right, let's get into it. So first things first is product market fit. Oops First things first is product market fit and you know choosing the right product So I'm gonna keep it simple here are three things that you must do in my opinion when I do product research to make sure I choose the right product and and master product market fit. So I want a broad niche. I want something that can target a lot of people and have a very wide target audience. And more importantly, I want things that are year round. So I'm not selling seasonal products. I'm not selling swimwear. I want things that sell January through December. Um, so that's gotta be a broad niche. And for example, like home decor, very, very broad, right? Um, everyone that has a house is in your possible target market um, people that are renting and people that own houses So it's a great niche very very broad now getting more specifically um, Getting more specific if I'm doing home decor and say I want to do like outdoor lighting I would type that into Google trend and I haven't done this But I can almost assume that outdoor lighting is a pretty stagnant Google trend, you know it gets dark every single day. People need new lights. Um, I can assume that is pretty stagnant. Now, if I'm selling trending products, you might see a spike. You might see a huge drop. I want to stay away from those products. It needs to be stagnant or an upward trend, and therefore, it is you know it hits my it hits my goals for for testing a product. And then again, I want my margins to be seventy percent. Now, be careful. It doesn't need to be just one unit be have 70% margins. You need to factor in any upsells. You need to factor in your shipping price. And you need to factor in your quantity breaks. If people buy more than one product, maybe one unit doesn't get you to 70% margins. But if they buy two or three, that really helps you get closer to the 70% margins. Um, so 70% plus, honestly, 80% is even better. I've been talking to my mentor lately, and, and he shoots for 80%. Um, so, you know, there's brands that have well over these margins, but 70% minimum All right, and if you guys have any questions at any time, just comment down below and I'll be happy to answer them All right, <clears throat> let's move forward So after product market fit you need to build your store, right? You need you need a landing page You need somewhere where your customers can you know shop from So when you're making your store and you're choosing the copywriting and the headline you know, everything comes from market research and understanding your target market. And the easy way to do this is look at your competition, but you should always be one step ahead of them and do your own market research and make your own store and make your own headlines, right? Nothing nothing great comes from copying and pasting, but you can learn from them and then, you know, do your own research and, and make your own website a lot better than theirs. And then, yeah, one product store, guys, I've done a million dollars, over a million dollars with one product store. Simple homepage and one product lander, you know, that's it. Um, so free themes versus paid themes. I've done a million dollars on the refresh theme and I just recently switched to the paid shrine theme. I think it was like $350, something like that. They both work. Free themes are great. There's 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 quite a few on the, on the Shopify store that you can use. I use refresh, I use Dawn. Um, what other one? Pretty much just refresh and Dawn and debut as well. Um, but yeah, you can go with either one. Now, you want your store to be optimized for conversions. So that's where you should be studying CRO, conversion rate optimization. Easy way to do this, just go on Twitter and follow all the CRO, guy, CRO guys and learn from them. And they post such valuable content. And ultimately, you want to be split testing and figuring out what tweaks on your website produce a better conversion rate and a better revenue or a better revenue per visitor. 
um, basically zero in my, in, in, from my experience is just optimizing those two, um, one or the other. Um, but just go look at like great, great stores and, and great D2C brands and they've probably done a lot, they've probably spent a lot of money, you know, doing their own CRO test. Doesn't mean it'll work for you, but you can learn from them and apply their principles to your store. And lately, I've been really honing down on this is just focus on three unique selling propositions per landing page. You don't want to bombard your customer with too much information if it's not important. So only pick the first three. And then if you want to make your landing page longer, just repeat them in different angles or different um, in different ways. But you don't need to tell them all your benefits like like that are just unimportant to your main selling points. If anything, it just raises more questions in their brain about your product where it should be simple and they should be focused on why exactly I need this product and that can be simplified into three unique selling propositions. So just keep it simple. And product images are very important. I've been using Hotjar lately, which is like a Shopify app <clears throat> that records your screen vis visitors, re your visitors, and you can see where they're clicking and where they're swiping. And the highest engagement is on the product images. So they're very, very important. And they should, they should actually do more than just show your product. They should explain your product as well and show the features and benefits. And you can do this by editing product images in Canva um, and choosing a template that looks great for your store. And go look at go look at great stores. I think Avi, yeah, Avi does a really good job with their product images, um, tabs, as well. Um, Rose Skin Co. as well has some really good images. Just go look and see what they're using, um, because people will be, people will look through your images first before they start reading your description and reading your copy. All right, moving on. So, going to the next part of you know you have your. You have your product, you have your store, now you need advertisements, which is arguably the most important part. So you need to make your own ad concepts. What's an ad concept? It's basically just an angle of how you're, like, how you're positioning your product on these platforms like Facebook and Instagram and, and, and TikTok. Um, and I work with Viral.com ads and you guys can get your ads from there. And I want to show you guys a new update that they just had on their um on their store so when you order from viral Recom ads if you guys haven't ordered already you order first and then you fill out a submission form which you know has your email and your product name and stuff but most importantly what they changed here is you can now provide word by word hooks for your ads and scripts and a hook and a script together makes an ad concept now it's you need to understand it's your job as the business owner and the marketer to come up with these ad concepts these are optional, and if you don't do them, VEA, Viral Ecom Ads, would do their best job to make their own hook and script for you. But it's not their job, guys. It, it should be up to you as the marketer to submit these. So spend time before you order Viral Ecom Ads to really write out your hooks and your scripts and just and then just provide them here so you have much higher quality ads that should produce better CPAs for your store and for your product and, and you know when you're running Facebook ads or TikTok ads or whatever you choose. So let's go through this. So as long as you have a reason why you're testing the ad concept, I deem it testable. Um, I don't overthink it. And to be honest, like as marketers, we don't know how they're going to react, how they're going to work until you test them. So have an open mind and just have a reason why you're testing something, whether it be you really like this hook or your competitors running this hook, whatever it may be, just have a reason why. And I put that in an Excel sheet. I literally have a, have a, have a column that says why, and I fill it out. Um, now, if you don't want to order from Viral.com ads and uh, maybe you're a really good editor, just edit yourself, but do some sort of editing where you can have a good hook and have a good script. For me, I suck at editing and it's a waste of my time, so I just use Viral.com ads, right? It's just so much easier and they're 75% off if you're a VIP member. It gets it down to like $12 per video. Um, so yeah, you want to submit ad concepts and you want to bait your customer with a hook. Um, if you were fishing, and you're fishing next to someone who's catching a lot of fish and you start fishing and you're not catching any fish in the same exact spot, it's probably the bait that you're using. And in this case, the bait is your hook. It is the most important part. So if you're not gonna fill out all of this, make sure you fill out the hook because it is the most important part of your ad. It's 80% of your ad. So think of it like this. If you're spending $1 on an ad, right? Your, your, your budget's at a dollar. 80 cents of that is getting spent on the hook. 
Because if you don't catch their attention, they're just going to scroll by and you just wasted your dollar, which means your hook wasn't good enough. So your hook is the most important part of the ad. I know I keep saying that, but it is so important. And I'll literally just test new hooks in my ad account and boom, every once in a while you find a winning hook that you can scale. All right. Hope that made sense. Again, if you have any questions, just comment down below. All right. Next, how do you test your ads on Facebook? And I specialize in Facebook ads, guys. I'm not a huge TikTok fan. Uh, I've done TikTok ads before and I know a little bit little bit about them but I specialize in Facebook ads and this is my current testing strategy that you guys can copy and try out for yourself so it's very simple it's one CBO one ad set all of your ads under that ad set and if it's your very first campaign and you don't know what country you, you're gonna advertise in or scale in just do a t4 test so you can do UK USA Canada and Australia put that into a CBO and then after a couple of days, you can break it down and see where most of your spend is going. And then you can remake this campaign with just that country. But we're utilizing broad targeting on the ad set level. Ad set means ad settings. So you're not going to choose any interest. You're going to keep it wide open, just the locations, age, and gender. And that is it. Nothing else. Advantage placements. And then you want to put all of your ads under the ad set level. And then I set it at $50 a day. I let it run for two days minimum. The first day can be bad. You know, the first day isn't usually the great <clears throat> um, and it needs time to optimize. So that's why I choose $50 and let it run for two days minimum. And then I can look at it and look at the data and see what the next best move is. All right, that's the strategy. Super, super simple. <clears throat> so scaling, how do you scale? Once that CBO is performing good and you're hitting your CPA goals and your margins are hopefully between 20 and 30% plus, you're in a good position to scale. So you can scale by 20 cent per 20% per per day if your CPA goals are hit from the day before or the past couple of days before. And you can scale down by 20% if you notice your profit margin going down or even if you're losing money, you can just scale down by 20%. It's not too complicated. And the whole goal here is to have more winning ads within your ad set that are working together as you scale your budget. Because what happens is you reach a limit for your ad that it just can't scale past. And from there, you need better ads, you need more broad ads, you need ads that are stronger and can scale higher. So when you raise your budget, your margin doesn't decrease and you're actually able to scale past the limit that you had before, whether it be $500 a day in spend or $2,000 a day in spend. You need winning ads that can scale further in your ad account and stabilize your ad account together. So that's it. That's a scaling strategy, testing strategy. It's pretty simple, guys. Um, nothing too complicated. So last slide is the flywheel. Let me explain. So if you're not making 10K per month, follow this flywheel. The flywheel is basically a month breakdown into four different sections. So imagine you have a wheel with one tick, two tick, three tick, four ticks, and every single tick is a product test, <clears throat> which means you're gonna test four products per month, right? Now, if I launch my product every single Friday of the month, I'll test four products a month. And in between a Friday to Friday, instead of just fooling around watching TikTok and watching YouTube videos, well, maybe YouTube videos can help if you're watching the right YouTube videos, but you should be focusing on improving your skills as a media buyer, as a, cre a creative strategist, as a web designer, right? You should be trying to improve your test every single time. So your first test is probably not gonna work, your second is probably not gonna work, but your third and fourth might get better and better as the flywheel continues to spin and you can improve your skills as a dropshipper. Now remember, dropshipping is not a skill, it is a business model. Dropshippers actually have a lot of skills like I just mentioned and they constantly need to be improved and there's so much to learn I mean, I read a lot of books go read this book reality and advertising. Maybe read that on Monday um, You know just constantly improve your skills and whatever you learn just apply it to your next test Until something hits and then I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of myself But once something hits that flywheel turns from a testing flywheel to a scaling flywheel now you need to learn a whole other skill set um, of scaling in itself, or maybe, um, you know, working with your suppliers better, um, communication with your supplier, negotiation with your supplier. There's a lot of things that go into these flywheels, but if you're not actively improving and focusing on them, you know, you're basically playing the lottery and just spinning an empty flywheel, trying to get lucky, which most dropshippers do. So 
don't do that. Um, focus on your skills and actually learn skills that you can repeat over and over again so you can make more stores, more products, and make more money. It's that simple. All right, that's it. Um, and here's a quote to end it off. Advertising is like fishing. Choose the right bait and everything else gets easier. Um, me, but I also learned this concept from a book, but these are my own words. All right, guys, that's it. If you have any questions, comment down below. And yeah, that's it. See you guys.